All right, doing another uh, notebook video today, this time leveraging a notebook to try out Direct Lake for your import model. Um, and I'm using task flows here to maybe help try to tell the story here. Uh, but basically what I'm gonna show you uh, is how to take an existing model and report, in this case an import model, use a, a notebook leveraging Semantic Link Labs and Semantic Link, uh, and then showing how you could use it in maybe two different scenarios. One is where, hey, I'm, I'm happy with my current model, but I keep hearing about Direct Lake and I wanna try it out and just see if it's as performant as everybody says. Um, and so this first approach I'll show you is just how to, how to take, one, take Direct Lake for a spin, right? You're not coming up with new ETL yet. You're not having to re-import your data in a different way. Um, you're just converting it to Direct Lake and seeing how it does. The other scenario is, is you've already convinced yourself, hey, I do want to move to Direct Lake, um, and I'm going to go ahead and create new tables, leveraging all the new options that I have with Fabric, um, Dataflow Gen 2, Notebooks, and or Pipelines to land my Delta tables in there. But once I do that, I then want to just leverage all the stuff I had in my existing model, measures, calculation groups, field parameters, all that stuff. And also the report that I've that I've already created that's attached to my current import model. So I'll walk through um, both scenarios in this video. Now, uh, last week, Guy and Cube put out a great video that's very similar to this one. And uh, these two things I'm talking about, I think, are useful variations on what uh, Patrick talked about in that video. So uh, in this one, he talks about leveraging Semantic Link Labs to move your import or direct query model, copying all that stuff. Um, getting the PQT, creating Dataflow Gen 2s from your current Power Query M code, uh, great, great approach. Um, but I'll show you some differences here. Um, again, if you aren't already checking out Semantic Link Labs, check out the documentation here. Uh, I'll put the link in the description, but there's multiple useful packages here. I'm using several of these and what I'm about to show you from the Direct Lake package, uh, I think the Lake House package migration for sure and report. Uh, as well. All right. And the notebook I'm about to walk through with you is available on my file share on Hoosier BI. I'll put the link to that in the in the chat as well. But there's the two sections there for these two scenarios that that I want to talk to you about. All right. So uh, first things first, to be able to do this first approach, um, you need to have one lake integration turned on for your model. Right. And so, you know, go to your data set settings, go down to one lake integration and make sure this is turned on. Right. Um, and once that happens, what that does is it takes your import model and I'm using the one lake uh, file explorer add in here. And if you sync up your, your one lake, once you do that, you'll see uh, in your workspace, this is the workspace I'm using this move to direct lake. Uh, it creates a uh, it's hidden in the UI, but you see it here, uh, this dot semantic model. Uh, and this has the delta tables for your model. In this case, these are all the, the tables in this model. Okay, um, and so we're, we're gonna leverage that in this first approach, all right? So if I go um, just back to the workspace, I just wanna show you the, the report that we're starting with here. And it's just this flights data I use this for a lot of my demos. It's got 43 million rows in the fact table. Um, and very basic, not very pretty report here. I've got this summary page. And then on this other page, I wanted to check this functionality. So I've got some field parameters and calculation groups and you know all that, all that stuff is, is working. Okay, So that's, again, very basic uh, report. But this will work with more advanced reports, obviously. All right, so if I go over to the notebook, the first thing I'm gonna do, and I will pause the video if, if some of these take too long, but the first thing I need to do is install the Semantic Link Labs. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that usually takes about 20, 30 seconds or so. And again, I listed two useful scenarios here. One is again, you're just taking Direct Lake for a spin and you want to, before you invest more time in working up your data with these other tools, I want to see how it performs. And this also 
could be an approach to just create like a direct lake replica of your model. Say your concurrency is getting high on your import model and people are starting to notice uh, some lag there. You should definitely try QSO first uh, for high concurrency, but, but this would be an option as well to just very quickly make a direct lake replica and, and give the link to that new report to a subset of your organization to spread the, spread the work out a little bit. All right, so Semantic Link Labs is installed. I'm gonna run this block here just to um, define some variables for me. This is the model and report I just showed you. I'm gonna um, just uh, put it uh, at the end, this underscore one lake integration to be the new data set name, the new model name and the new report name. And then I'm gonna go ahead and run this one. This will take a little bit of time, but this is gonna go and uh, create, if, if this lake house that I've called doesn't exist, and I just deleted it before the video, so I know it's not there. Um, if it doesn't exist, it's gonna create it. And what it's gonna do is create a lake house and then create shortcuts uh, in that lake house to that model, uh, semantic dot semantic model lake house that I showed you. So this is gonna bring all my tables into shortcuts from that works, uh, that lake house that is integrated via the one lake integration and, and kept up to date that way. All right, so I'll pause the video and we'll see how long this takes. All right, so that took uh, four and a half minutes. This was the longest part. There's some nice messages you get along the way. Uh, it updated my delta tables in that dot semantic model uh, hidden lake house I showed you. Um, the tryout lake house wasn't there, so it created it and then created all my shortcuts. And the next cell here reminds me to attach the lake house. I'm going to go ahead and attach that lake house that we just created. And you want to make sure you're using one that uh, does not have schema at this point. And where is the tryout lake house? Right there. Okay, so we're going to attach that lake house. We'll see all of our delta tables there. And we can go ahead and create our new semantic model. So what I learned in doing this is I can't just do this for all the tables. I actually need to do all my tables except those that are field parameters or calculation groups. Um, and at first I was troubleshooting and so I hard coded those list of tables in there and then worked out a way just using regular rolled semantic link, not semantic link labs, to go out um, and basically get a, a data frame that has all my partitions, which had the fields I need needed to get my table names and also to filter away um, any field parameter. So if it has name of in the query or the expression, um, and if it the source type isn't a calculation group. So this returns a, and then I grab the unique and make it a list. So this is my list, all list of all my tables that aren't field parameters and aren't calculation groups. Okay, then I can go ahead and use um, this uh, from the direct lake package of semantic link labs generate the semantic model given my variable names uh, and my list of uh, tables to create the model and then it goes and migrates the all the objects from the original the current import model to that new model then it migrates field parameters so that this one does like measures and and uh, that kind of stuff and then this one does the field parameters and then i end with it with a refresh All right, so this took about a minute and a half. And again, there's a bunch of useful messages along the way. So it created my new model, again, with that list of tables that I gave it. Uh, it did include a refresh step automatically for that. Let me know when it was done. And then it went ahead and migrated um, all the table stuff, column stuff. Uh, and then uh, I didn't have any hierarchies in there. Oh, I guess there was one. Uh, all my measures, calculation groups, um, calculation items, relationships, you know, I did have a couple roles in there as well, uh, all that. Um, and then it, it went and got the field parameters as well. Right, so that, that worked great. And there is this function here in the migration, you can do a, a validation. So I'll go ahead and run this just to show you what that output looks like, but it basically goes through all the the model objects and tells you true, false, whether um, 
everything successfully. You know, it's comparing the two models to, to make sure that it, that it worked. Uh, I'll show the output here. And you can see this and you will see things like partitions are false because we're, we've moved to a direct lake model. So uh, that's not relevant here, um, but everything else was, was true there, right? So that's great. All right, so now we've got the, the model uh, and now we wanna go ahead and uh, clone the report that I had and bind it to that new workspace, or sorry, that new semantic model that I created. And this one runs really fast. Um, so it cloned the report and then it bound that report to the new uh, direct lake semantic model that we created. So now if I go back to the workspace, um, we can see that um, this new um, model was created. I did a test run before. I don't need that one right now. And then what I've seen too is the um, the report doesn't always show up right away, so if you just do a quick refresh, the report will show up. And then I can uh, go to the report and confirm that everything copied over correctly and it's behaving uh, as it should. And in my case, I wanted to make sure that the summary page came up, which it does, and then also that my field parameters and stuff were still working. And they are, right? So that's great. So my, my functionality is there. And so now I'm, I have a direct lake version of my model and I haven't had to re-import the data or do anything. I just leverage one lake integration, okay? So hopefully that's a useful scenario. Also, if I wanted a, a direct lake replica of my report model, boom, there it is. All right, so let's go back to the notebook and let's um, actually back here real quick. So. I showed you this one here where we're trying out Direct Lake. And then there's also, okay, I, I know I want to go to Direct Lake and I want to leverage some of these new DI tools that come with Fabric. And so this um, task here on the task flow shows you, uh, in my case, I'm pulling data from Azure SQL. So I've got a pipeline to bring in all the database tables. And then I've got this other notebook that creates my uh, measure table, which is really just a blank table. Uh, it also creates my uh, planes table, which is actually a DAX table. Um, and so I just used a select, you know, Spark SQL um, select distinct from my tail number column of my flights table to create a dimension of just the plane tail numbers, All right? And then I've got this um, new tables lake house. And so if I go over to that, you'll see, you know, this is the, the, lake house that I've created again using these other ways to do my to bring my data and transform it so these first um, these these four tables in the timetable come from my Azure SQL this measure table and this planes table come from uh, the notebook and again I could have used data flows gen 2 here as well so if I go back to my notebook and I go down to the bottom to this other section here, this this part of the code uh, helps you um, permanently move to direct lake model. So in this case, I've got my source tables, I've got those all worked out, and so this is very similar um, to the other one. I, I won't even bother to run it because it did work successfully before. Um, in this case, I'm calling this stuff new tables, uh, both the data set and the name uh, and the report names. Um, this does the same kind of thing. It goes out and just creates a model just for the tables that are not calculation groups and not field parameters. Okay, those are handled differently. Um, same, same stuff, doing a refresh there, clone the report, rebind the report, and if I wanted to validate, I could, right? So again, this is just a, another variation on the two more examples of all the awesome stuff you can do with Semantic Link Labs to automate some of the stuff you're doing uh, with your semantic models and Power BI reports. All right, I'm gonna run this cell and I'll pick it back up when it finishes.